All right, what's going on? Welcome to the Real Estate Dojo, abbreviated as RED, because the ultimate goal is to remove those red lines from your uh, balance sheet, increasing net profits. And we do that through taking in what you're doing in your business, business right now, and then giving you quick actionable advice on what you can do this month, next month, and the month after in order to improve your business, focusing on increased net profits, uh, generating more pros or more leads from prospects and more leads to revenue. So today we got Mike Allen. He's out of Maryland, a uh, previous uh, Marine Corps veteran, or not previous, he is a Marine Corps veteran. I think once a Marine, always a Marine kind of mentality they have. I'm not really sure. I think he still uses the backyard for the bathroom and everything like a typical Marine, but um, I don't really know. We're going to talk about it though um, here. Uh, so I'm going to bring him on and we're going to go over kind of what he's done where he's at now um, and kind of what he's having struggles with and talk about the tools he's using um, and if we can't save him some money and then maybe put him in a, a good direction moving forward. So uh, Mike, man, I appreciate you coming on, Mike, especially uh, being vulnerable. We talk about numbers here. We talk about a lot of the things that usually people are, are flaunting about and, and lying about on social media. So uh, one of the precursors to this is, is just full transparency so we can be fully transparent with you. Um, and you already know that. So I do appreciate, uh, that welcome to the, the real estate dojo, bro. Appreciate it, man. Uh, and I still do use the bathroom outside, uh, after I ate a few crayons. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, know, not, nothing changes. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, I, I like to pick on Marines just because one of my partners is a, is a Marine, uh, helicopter pilot. And, and, uh, sometimes I feel like he quite literally is still eating crayons. Um, but, uh, dude, they're good. Man. Yeah, they're I, good. I appreciate it. Um, let's kind of go back. Let's talk about kind of, um, that journey, right? You're, you're in the Marine Corps, right? And then you got out. I mean, give us a little kind of a backstory real quick for like five minutes. Uh, yeah, so I had um, graduated high school in 2009, um, wanted to do something with my life, wasn't really sure. I was working at UPS, um, didn't really love that, started college, and then immediately realized that was not for me at 18 years old. Um, so went to the Air Force office, actually to join the Air Force at first, and they weren't having me because I had like reckless driving on my record and all that. And um, I was really kind of down and defeated. My best friend got in and I didn't. Um, and as I, was, as I was leaving one day, the Marine Corps recruiter was like, you know, hey, young buck, like, what's going on? And I told him, he was like, reckless driving? I said, yeah. He was like, you do drugs? No. Any DUIs? No. He was like, come on down here, bud. And that was all she wrote, man. Like, signed up that day, <laughs> swore in like a week later, and got shipped yeah. off to boot camp, like, <laughs> like six months later. And um, I mean, it, it was cool. Um, you know, I did, uh, did five years down in North Carolina. I uh, did one combat deployment in 2013. Um, and I was hoping that it was going to springboard me into my career. Um, and the job that I had was direct air support. So talking to pilots, talking to guys like your friend, um, getting medevacs out to them, blowing people up, all that good stuff. Unfortunately, there's really no civilian equivalent to that other than like a taxi cab dispatcher. And that's not really what I envisioned for my life. Um, so got out, um, became a personal trainer, you know, typical Marine Corps thing. Um, you know, did that, get, got into the physical therapy assistant program at school. Um, I kind of liked the kinesiology aspect. Um, you know, got about halfway done the program. It's a really tough program to get into. I was never very book smart. I don't know how I got into it. Um, and then like halfway through, uh, you know, him, Josh uh, Nicodemus uh, was up here. He was a pretty big wholesaler. I reached out to him about, you know, real estate because um, I've, for whatever reason, I started to really, you know, think about like the future and rental properties and how that was a lot more lucrative than your traditional, like working nine to five, get your 401k and you're retiring. Um, a couple months later, he was like, Hey man, you know, I think you got an opportunity for you. And we met up and he basically offered me to do acquisitions for him. And I was like, cool, man, I quit. And he's like, what do you mean? And I was like, school's gone. I quit. He's like, just like that. Said, just like that, man. He was like, what about your wife? I'm like, she'll be fine. Right. So it was literally just like that. Like I gave it all up. Um, you know, like, as someone that's in the service, you know, it's like, just take some action, right? Like regardless of if it's right or wrong, whatever you pick, just kind of commit to it. So that's what I did. Uh, worked for him for about two years in May of last year, May, 2020, we kind of got to this crossroads, right? He, he since moved to Florida was dominating the Florida market with, with flips, right? Um, he was like, you know, he's like, if you want to stay up there and keep working for me, I'll keep pumping marketing for you. It's not a big deal. He was like, or, you know, we can call it, call it quits. He was like, no hard feelings, man. He's like, I understand. So, 
I thought about it and I was like, you know, it's really easy for him to continue to market for me because I have nothing at risk. I had no money going out, none of that stuff. So I was like, man, I'm going to, I'm going to take the leap and do it on my own. And that's just what I did. I just dove into it. Um, and just kind of figured it out, right? You know, I've done texting, I've done cold calling, I did PPC, which was very expensive. Got one deal from it, it was like a, a 1X ROI, right? So I basically broke even on that. Um, been bouncing around and my the flip that I do kind of helped keep me afloat, right? So I did five last year, one was an off-market deal that we actually found, one was on market, one was actually my sister's house and um, two were from wholesalers. And then this year, again, I just, I'm a little just wired the deposit for my third flip today. Um, you know, two were from a wholesaler. One is from my old youth pastor's house that we're going to 50, 50 and split. So, you know, I can sustain myself with like referrals and wholesalers and that's great and all. But then I think about, you know, these flips I got from wholesalers that are getting a 40 K assignment. So I'm like, well, damn, if I would have got that, the four, that's an extra 40 K in profit or I could have wholesaled it or I could have bought it and wholesaled it. Right. So I want to open up my horizon and really grow a business. And as you'll see in this 15 minutes that I'm very unorganized, I'm just kind of like, figuring it out as I go. And I'm not really building a business. I'm just working in my business, if that makes sense. No, no. I mean, that's, that's crazy. I mean, um, it's, it's, it's cool though, the kind of the natural progression of it. Right. Um, and, and, and what's really beautiful about it is, is if you know how to buy a house, right, which you, you do, you've done that plenty of times, really the only piece you're missing is how to market. Right. And that's like a, it's 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 truly. I mean, it's one of the most important. It is the most important, you know, function of it. But it's it's one of it's not super complicated. It's way more complicated to do a remodel than to you know do an SMS campaign. You know, in 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 the, the difference is is like, you know, it's not complicated to throw a hammer, right? It's complicated to know where to throw the hammer and when. Um, in in both in the marketing side and also in throwing the ha hammer side, if you make the wrong decision, you can lose a lot of money, right? So um, you have a lot of practice in one and we just kind of want to refine the other so that, like you said, you can, you know, you can keep those, those assignments to yourself or you can wholesale it yourself. And um, <clears throat> it really just creates more options. You become, you become a full circle real estate professional at that point when you can look at a property and say, okay, this one's a wholesale. I can work with somebody else on that. It's not worth really me flipping it. I'm going to make more money now uh, and make all those decisions. So I love it. Awesome. Okay. Um, so now that we have a little backstory. Let's kind of look through kind of what you're doing right now. As, as of now, it looks like you're doing some cold call and SMS, like you mentioned, looking at maybe doing a little bit of direct mail. Um, what is your total monthly ad spend right now? Like what, or like, what is your, what is your monthly budget or ad spend? Um, so I would say I do not have a budget basically. Um, and I, that's like, I don't keep track of that stuff. I, I kind of like keep it in my head. Right. Which is kind of, you know, the lame answer. Um, I did take the auto lead gen challenge and since then I hired a VA cause before I was like, I can cold call, I can cold call. And I'm like, dude, well, that's like a $4 an hour task, right? Like my time's worth more than that. So that's why I hired that out. Um, so I actually have a phenomenal VA. She cold calls, she texts, she updates REI uh, for me. Um, since we don't have smarter contact and our access connected. So she like, well, if it's a lead, she goes in, she does that. So I'm kind of training her in our access to what, you know, I know, uh, which is a good thing. So I'm paying her uh, six bucks an hour and she does 30 hours a week for me. And she'll pretty much do whatever I ask her. Like right now she's pulling on county data, right? So tax delinquent, um, probates if she could find them. I know um, in Maryland, it's a little bit hard to get like the tax liens, like they come in weird formats. The probates are hard to find. Um, so I have her doing that for me uh, right now. And then, you know, I have, like I said, I have Carrot, uh, REI Sift, which are both on the yearly because I plan to keep them both long-term, which just makes more sense. Um, and I paid for those last month. Smarter Contact, I'm on monthly. Uh, the middle plan, I think, was a thousand texts a month. And then um, Call Tools, which is, you know, your hundred bucks a month. So I would say, you know, if you don't include the yearly subscriptions, maybe $800 a month. Uh, if you include paying the VA and Smarter Contact and Call Tools. Okay, cool. All right. So, so that, that's good to know, right? It's good to kind of have at least a bead on it. Um, I will say, I, I already know that one of the, um, one of the things out of this is going to be to make sure that we have QuickBooks in our business and we know that exact answer yeah. month over yeah. month. Um, yeah. I have QuickBooks too. And I have a, like a bookkeeper and accountant and she does a, a quarterly review for me. Um, so okay. I don't know. I don't know if that's like a to, software that I can use for my budget. I didn't know that was a thing. 
Yeah, so, well, it needs to be QuickBooks, basically, and you need to bump down and, and you need to be doing um, at least monthly at minimum reviews with your bookkeeper. Um, okay. And for me and my companies, including my personal life, for my personal finances, for my two businesses, uh, primary two businesses, um, it's biweekly reviews. Every two weeks, we do a review. Is there anything that's going up? Is there an increase in this? Is there a decrease in this? Um, they flag things that are becoming more expensive. Uh, it's really important that we we see at the end of every single month a PNL, and they should be generating that PNL and sending it to us, putting it in a folder or something like that. Um, that okay. That's uh, that's paramount. So that's that's first and foremost. Um, okay. with, with you and, and especially since you're already doing flips and um, and all that kind of stuff, every one of your flips should have um a, a whip in it like a work work in progress uh inside of quickbooks that the money is allocated to and you should be eating that you know money up so if if your bookkeeper isn't familiar how to how to really work with a flipper and structure quickbooks for flipping in real estate then that might be something you need to look into as well um okay Okay, cool. Um, with that, um, let's see here. And other, the biggest reason why QuickBooks is in just tracking that on a monthly is really important. And just in general is for, for, for everybody else is, is it's the money that you pay for the bookkeeping for everything else. It might be, let's say it's 150 or $200 a month. Um, it is going to save you so much more in, in taxes. In addition to that, every month now, you know where to put your money. It gives you that ability to make decisions on where your money's going to go that you otherwise you know, wouldn't have the insight on. So much similar to how REICF is with your data and where to put your marketing dollars, it's kind of that marriage um, to, that makes to where you know how much money you have to actually put anywhere. Uh, besides just looking at your bank account and saying, I think I got like $10,000, $20,000 and I'm good, you know, um, because we'll very quickly lose our money if we do it, do it that mm -hmm. way. Um, okay, so you got REI seven carrot. What are you doing with carrot right now? Out of curiosity, you just kind of have it and it's sitting, or are you are you on the mm -hmm. um, the content pro plan and at least doing you know uh, articles every week or? Um, so yeah. uh, with carrot, so I had the paperclip campaign and I signed up with them for six months, like PPC company, and they did my carrot play for me. They built it out, paid for it, all that good stuff. Um, when I decided to not renew with them, um, they gave me the carrot site and I basically haven't done anything with it. Um, but I know I eventually want to get back into that space. So I wanted to keep it off. So I paid for the year. And also when I do start the direct mail campaign, I want to put the website on there because, um, you know, I can remember countless times where, you know, a lead will come in from the carrot site and, you know, I would talk to the seller and he would say, hey, you know, we got your postcard, but we went to your website first and then put the information. So I feel like it's a good segue to have. Um, I think, you know, that was just one deal that pays for carrot for a decade, right? Like, I mean, it's not, um, you know, if I'm worried about paying for a carrot website, then it's like, if that's breaking the bank, then I feel like I, <laughs> something else. Yeah, there's other wrong. problems. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Um, and the beautiful thing, and I'll kind of get into this when I kind of do my uh, kind of like a summary of advice that I'm kind of coming up with here is, um, is what you already kind of touched on, right? Having a place for them to come to, having a place where it is your home of your business, if you will. Um, and, and ultimately, the beautiful thing about that web presence, there's a lot of ways that we can leverage it for free. Um, I mean, we just closed a deal, um, um, you know, from from. SEO, but more importantly, we've closed many, many, many deals from just posting on Craigslist or posting on Facebook and posting on places where we get a lot of visibility. And it's just about maybe a neighbor seeing that, oh yeah, that property next door to me is super messed up and, uh, and they submit the property on, on behalf of them and, and they give you the information. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a lot of really things. It, it's one of those things where you don't know what's going to happen because you're, you're not doing it. Right. It's one of those things you have mm -hmm. to do it in order to see like what the results are. And even if it, it's not very trackable to say, Oh, I posted 10 Facebook posts and I got one deal. Like it's not, it doesn't really function like that, but it's one of those things where your VA can post a post, you know, for you on your behalf. I'm um, saying, Hey, we buy properties just so you know, we're looking to buy three more this month. Um, trying to revitalize this neighborhood. And, and, if you get one fucking awesome, you know, like that's free money, you know, at that mm -hmm. point. Um, if you don't get one, then no harm, no foul, but we got to do it in, in more in the benefit of it is too, is now we see people coming to our website and it naturally, um, increases 
our um, our SEO because there is traction happening there, whether we get anybody or not. I pay for Facebook ads and we, cl we close deals. Uh, we probably get one or two contracts a month off of Facebook, but it, we're targeting those people really in a niche way. So it really just bolsters our process. And I don't care if I was getting deals or not getting, I was obviously, I love getting deals, but I'm willing to spend, you know, 10, 15 or $20,000 a year on Facebook simply because it makes it to where I get a thousand or 2000 people coming to my website. And it keeps me at number one, you know, in addition to the articles that I'm posting every week. So definitely we're going to focus on that a little bit more moving forward. Um, but we're going to kind of summarize a full action items here at the very end. Um, okay. So you have the one VA cold calling KPIs tracking. Um, I know that you, um, you just got the ninja bonus. So one of the things I was going to say when I seen your stuff already, was, you know, the whole KPI tracking or not tracking that mm -hmm. KPI masterclass that you already, that I said to go through. I'm glad you asked that question earlier today when we spoke, because that's going to solve that problem hundred percent. So the very first mm -hmm. thing that I would, that, that I, if, if someone doesn't know their money and they don't know their KPIs, in one of these types of conversations, that's the very first, that's always going to be the first thing is like, okay, well, we can't really do anything else or know anything else until we get that unlocked. Because without that, you know, I mean, what are we going to really focus on, you know, but because you're doing flips, there's other things that we can, we can really do here. Um, okay, cool. So let's talk a little bit about how you're currently co-calling. Like what is the, what are they, what is your VA focusing on right now? Okay. So I just hired her like last month or so. So she's been with me for about six weeks. Um, okay. and I did, I, so I have done three complete cold call campaigns. Um, the first two went through texting and now I'm in the process of getting them on like a direct mail drip. Um, that first campaign was a stacked, uh, campaign. I believe it was a, a stacked campaign. Um, and then I did a, um, a vacant absentee campaign. So called through them three times, uh, through, and then move them over to SMS uh, three different times. And now I have a very, you know, more a much smaller list than the 1400 or so stack that I have. I think I have even less than half of that that I need to put on a direct mail uh, drip. I, so I haven't done a direct mail campaign. So I'm kind of looking into, you know, what, what websites to use. Um, am I going to use Ballpoint? Am I going to use Yellow, Yellow Letter HQ? Um, since, I, I, since I do believe stacked is one of the better lists to mark to like one of the one of the better buckets that you've said before um i think i'm going to spend a little bit more money and go for ballpoint um because i do feel like their mailers are probably top of the line that i've seen um so i'm gonna get them on a direct mail drip um like you know i just went through the go no go um and i literally just pulled out like seven or eight prospects to to literally like there's one person that skip trace two different times in rei sift um no numbers each time true people search no numbers advanced background checks no numbers like there's no way to get all this person so um i'm going to start her on a letter and or a postcard and i'm literally going to her house i'm just going to knock on the door like get a yellow piece of paper and write you know i'm looking for you know so and so i'd like to help you out with buying this property or, or whatever it is right and duct tape it into the door Exactly. Yeah. And then, and then even, you know, finding the siblings and, and stuff like that, yeah. being verified, uh, family tree now, all of those types of resources, which, which, because you took the, um, you, you also have the deep prospecting, um, program. So I'll, I'll cover that. And it, literally I, I show like three flow charts that we used, um, uh, when I was doing OSINT work, um, from a company and, um, kind of walks through the flow of how to like do that intelligence background. Um, uh, cool. Um, all right. So, so this is pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple for us because, you know, you, you are really lean right now in terms of your operation or you're really focused and you already understand. And I can tell you understand like the flow of things, right? The idea is to do sequential marketing and never spend the most expensive, uh, marketing strategy first, unless it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So for mm -hmm. example, like we were talking about earlier, uh, but for context, for people listening, um, you're in the go, no go challenge. A part of the go, no go challenge is when you skip trace through records in two different locations, you don't get no results. You should be direct mailing those people right away. Right. Um, everybody you did get phone numbers for, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start cold calling those a certain segment of those individuals that you didn't get phone numbers back from. We're going to go ahead and start deep prospecting, which is essentially digging in, uh, finding siblings and everybody else door knocking everything you just said. Um, so what I, what I want to see you do moving forward, um, uh, for the next month is number one, I need you to talk to your bookkeeper more often. Um, number two, um, I need you to know your KPIs and what's happening with those calls, um, through those last 
three campaigns and three cycles, we need to be able to see on a week to week basis as our caller is doing some of those wider, you know, outbound reaches. Um, at what point do we start getting degraded returns from the cold calling? Because we could call call through it three times. If we're not if we're not seeing a, a massive degrade, right, then we should call a little bit more, right? And then if 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 we do, then it, like really quickly, then we should move sooner, right? Um. So, but if we're not tracking it through Excel or anything else, then it's it's kind of. Uh, uh, we're kind of really still shotgun, even though we have a process because we're not tracking the process at a, you know, um, on a KPI level, then we're still technically shotgunning. Uh, it's just, uh, more of a, um, slug than it is birdshot. Um, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so, so we want that and you're going to get that because you're going through the KPI masterclass and includes the Excel documents, includes everything that you need to actually get that spun up and going. Um, uh, the biggest things uh, that, that we want to make sure we're doing in those cold calling that I'm pretty sure you're already doing is as you're cold calling, making sure that those phone numbers are getting updated, wrong number, DNC, dead and um, correct number, making sure the statuses get updated. That way, when we build our next campaign, we cannot include that stuff, only include the people we haven't reached yet and move that through the cycle. Um SMS wise, uh, I think you're still good there. It's the same concept. How many am I sending? And then how many uh, am I getting back? When you're doing those KPIs, and you're going to notice this in the KPI masterclass, I, I talk about it pretty heavily, is you have prospects and you have numbers. It's important that we track those two metrics on how many numbers we're sending out to our marketing campaign. So uh, if you have 100 you know, prospects, when you send it to call tools, if you go to the activities page and if, you know, because you're REI SIF user, um, you'll see how many phone numbers you sent to call tools. And then because you know how many prospects you had and how many phone numbers, now we're going to track, okay, well, how many, uh, how many wrong numbers were from that campaign? How many, uh, you know, leads came from that campaign? How many DNCs came from that campaign? And uh, I go through that in that KPI masterclass so that you can then have an idea like, cool, okay, for every thousand phone numbers that I dial, I'm going to generate X amount of leads. Because a lot of people think about it in the cold calling realm uh, of how many you know, prospects you call. It's not so much about how many prospects, it's about the, how many phone numbers, because we're spending money to get phone numbers, right? We're, we've already spent the money for the prospects and that's really for any marketing period. But for cold calling specifically, we want to know how much money, if we're spending a thousand dollars, it's a thousand dollars, we got X amount of phone numbers, it's going to generate us this many leads um, at a bulk level. And then as we call through it three times, now we're going to start digging deeper and we're going to start, you know, kicking out, uh, let's just say after three cycles, we're left with only 250 phone numbers. Then if we're only left with 250 phone numbers, then that's a really important metric to know because in order to scale now, if you produce X amount of revenue after calling through a thousand phone numbers, you're left with 250 phone numbers that you've never even reached before, which is equivalent to maybe let's say 50 contacts, you know, um, then we know that we can spend money to get a thousand phone numbers and expect this much money back. Um, it's nothing to really worry about right at, immediately, but I wanted you to understand again kind of the reason why not having, and that's why I always say is like, if we don't have insight, if we don't recapture the insight, we end up paying for it in the future because you're going to have to pay to gain that insight back on those last few campaigns because we weren't tracking it. Right. Um, because there's even though the, the main benefit that you have is that you know how much you sent to call tools and you, and you can always reverse engineer through filters to figure out the results to backfill your KPI tracker. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, we're going to get the KPIs in lock. That's first and foremost. We're going to get our talking to our, our, um, um, our, our bookkeeper uh, uh, more often. We're going to make sure that on a flip side, we're tracking work in progresses um, on how much mm -hmm. money. Are you using private money or hard money on flips? Um, both, right? Like I both. have a, a private lender that lends per deal. Um, it's no points, no doc fees, just straight 12%. I give her some of the listing and you know, we move on. Um, so that okay. I have that, um, if I don't, if that's tapped out and that's being used for a house, then I will do hard money. 
Okay. Yeah. So, so like when we receive money in our bank account, let's just say, um, before we had, uh, a flip, we had 50 grand in there and now we have 150 because they gave us a hundred grand to buy the house and do the remodel. Um, we need to know on a, at the end of every month on our P and L, how much of that 150,000 is actually our money because throughout that whole month you're, you're spending money on business expenses, you know? Um, and it's really hard when we're intaking money from, other people and we have our business money in there as well. That's technically our money. Um, whose is what in, in at the end of the month, what rolls over. And if you don't start tracking that and make it like a priority, if you end up having flips in the middle of December and we roll into the new year, it's, it's a, it's a pain in the butt, um, mm -hmm. to handle taxes. So let's make sure we get that in track. Let's make sure we, we go through the KPI masterclass and we're tracking those KPIs and um, let's make sure that we get some direct mail sent out to those people that are number one, skip trace in two locations and don't get any phone numbers from. Second priority would be anybody who um, who we've um, is like our ouchies, like maybe you mm -hmm. you have tax auctions or something and mm -hmm. period, you don't have time to call them. Let's go ahead and get them direct mail. And then third priority then would be, you know, all stacked. You know, um, so what you could do is you could use like ballpoint for the people you skip trace in two locations, uh, cause it's a little more expensive. And then for our ouchies for our like more, um, time sensitive ouchies, we can go ahead and, and use ballpoint as well. But for all of our stacked, we can use a simple postcard. That's only like 37 cents instead of, you know, a dollar 50, um, and, and that would make sure that maybe we've set a budget of, of, um, Let's say we can set a budget, a healthy budget to where we can do it for six months of $1,000 a month or, or $2,000 a month in direct mail, which is really a, a nice, healthy budget there. Um, and we say, okay, out of this $1,000, let me now look at my data and figure out which is the data that I think is the highest priority that I can make my $1,000 go the furthest. And that's the breakdown to do that. First and foremost, skip tracing two locations, no results. Second, ouchies that have a really high a time sensitive association. Cause if we start calling them and we don't reach them for a week on the phone and we only have like two months until they go to tax auction or something like that, then we're kind of effed. Same thing with probate probate. You want to get a hold of way earlier than later. And the sooner you can get a hold of a probate lead and get it to where you're controlling it, the better, because otherwise it starts getting, uh, it, it gets harder to enter in, inject yourself into that transaction. Um, so the time sensitive ones, and then the last maybe $300 were like, cool, I'm going to use these really cheap postcards and I'm going to hit as much of my stacked as I can. And you could still go niche. You can still say stacked and vacant and out of state. And maybe that's a thousand and boom, there you go. You can dedicate the rest of your funds to that. Um, so that's how I would do that. Just to resummarize again, bookkeeper, KPIs, getting direct mail out sooner so that as our cold callers call and generating those leads, you're also bringing in some inbound while she's doing all that outbound heavy lifting, generating leads for you to make offers on. You're focusing on finding those really niche people like the skip trace in two locations out of state vacant, right? Which might be only like yeah. 10 people, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Questions? Um, for those really small direct mail campaigns, like I'm talking like less than 100 where you can't really do a ballpoint or a yellow letter, uh, you said deal machine is what you use um, and just have yes. them send out. Okay. Yeah. In fact, you could even, you can even use deal machine and, um, upload a list and select a, 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 a amount of those and send them and add them to a campaign and just use their postcards for everything. If you wanted to, um, uh -huh. for those until we have our, um, integration where you don't have those limits internally, um, here in the next week or two. So I could basically get the list rolling in REI steps, however I want to do all the campaigns, export them to Deal Machine, and then they can all direct mail them that way. Yep, exactly. Yeah. As long as you okay. have the campaign add-on, which I believe is $20, um, and whatever um, their standard plan is, then you can upload them. When you upload them, you're going to say that you want to add a... Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a tag, right? And you're going to mm -hmm. want to tag it, whatever tag you used in REI Civ as the campaign tag. And most importantly, after you go through that KPI masterclass on the direct mail side, 
however many records you sent, however much money it costs, whatever date it was, whatever campaign name, make sure you document it with the tracking number. So at the end of every month, you can update that tracker on how many inbounds you received. You know, um, if you got any leads, if you got any closings and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So cool. I should pick up, yeah. So I should pick up call rail to track those direct mail campaigns. And should I, um, do multiple numbers for like, let's say one's a go, no go, you know, like one's a front end, one's a back end, you know, some are just, um, you know, your regular stack. Would you do that differently in each one or could you just do the same number? And just I would just use off? one okay. for now because, okay. um, what you can do is once the lead comes in, you can just look at mm. what it was and you can update okay. accordingly. I find it easier because in deal machine, especially, um, uh, you can create different templates, but, um, it's, easy you can only have one phone number associated with your account right so it's still using one yeah. phone number and i just i just call it to deal machine direct mail you know tracking number and you don't need to pick up call rail for that because um i'm you could you could technically use um you could technically use call tools uh, just buy a number in call tools and use that um, if, if you wanted to save money for now, because it's going to cost you $50 for, for, you know, call rail and then you, the phone number when you could just use a tracking number and call tools. And then when they call your cold caller can then literally answer it live if she's calling, you know, and mm -hmm. if, you know, she just needs to know that if she receives an inbound, that it's going to be that. So here's my recommendation on that is whatever you send direct mail on inside of call tools, create a list in there that is essentially the records that you're sending um direct mail, direct mail to that way when they call inbound um if it has a phone number and it's the same phone number it will pop up the record and it'll be associated with that list so she knows now if you're sending you know your no phone numbers you know postcards when they call inbound it's not going to link to anything because you don't have their phone number right mm -hmm. so she's going to have to right. know that to be able to handle that um, you know, okay, do you got a property address and, and you can use the inbound script from the auto lead gen challenge, um, under day five, we have the inbound cold call script. Um, mm -hmm. she can use that and then that'll kind of help break up that conversation on, on figuring out like what address do they belong to the, the kind of the hack is if you, if you, if they won't tell you, you could just do a really quick reverse phone number search using true people search or something like that on their phone number. See if it pulls mm -hmm. up an address, search that address in REI SIF really quick, and then be like, oh, okay, it, is it? I'm sorry, I think it might be 123 Main Street you're calling about. I sent you a postcard, and then you can try to recapture it that way. Mm -hmm. Typically, though, if they're not wanting to give you the address or they're not any, you know, being cordial or anything like that when they call inbound, they're probably not really interested in selling anyway. So, yeah, I don't think I would want my VA handling um, inbound like that. Um, like when I do direct mail or whatever it is, I would want to answer it live myself because I'm still going out locking up deals. Right. So I don't yeah, want that. Perfect. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. I would, I would, I would, I would rather you be doing that too, personally. Um, yeah. if you're going to end up using air call at all, you could, you could use air call for this as well. Instead of yeah. call rail, if you do decide to implement air call, um, otherwise $50 a month with call rail, it's perfectly fine too. Yeah. No. Yeah, that sounds good. I can just do it in call tools and just have it forward to, directly to my number so I can answer it live and just have the number saved as call tools and I'll know exactly what it is. Yep, perfect. That'll work perfect. Cool. Um, awesome. So those are your three action items. KPIs, bookkeeping, direct mail, integration uh, into your marketing cycle. Um, that'll help you kick up some leads uh, uh, inbound while you're doing some of that light outbound prospecting. And really remember, it's all about just building that, what I call a Viking ship marketing, right? Like it can get hit by any any means of, of the wave from no matter which direction we get into. And, and we're still going to stay afloat and kind of make it to our next island to conquer. Um, and uh, a lot of people, you know, initially, especially now they're saying, Oh, focus on one type of marketing. Like, well, my one type of marketing is focused on reaching one person, not mm -hmm. reaching, you know, 10, 10,000, because I just want to know if they want to sell or not want to sell. Um, right. for every no that you get through your deep prospecting and your other efforts is closer to a yes, uh, number one, but more importantly, it's the fact that now, you know, that's somebody that's associated with that property. You know, that they're a decision maker that, you know, that they said no. So now what we can do is we say, great. Um, can I follow up with you, uh, in three months from now? 
And now you, unlike anybody else, actually have a contact for that person to be able to follow up with them to even start with. So, you know, some people say, well, it's just a lot of work. And then they end up saying no. And I did all that work. And now, you know, um, I didn't get anything from it. What do you mean? Like you got the correct phone number to somebody on a property that you know ends up needing to be sold. Um, that's a win. Uh, do that as much as possible. And you're going to end up having the healthiest like prospects and lead the healthiest leads inside of your um, system compared to anybody else who has like 150. Eh, I think it all sells. You know, these people said mm -hmm. no, but they need to sell. There's a difference right. between that. I think I want to sell and don't need to compared to I don't want to sell, and I, but I need to sell because um, mm -hmm. one can be convinced a lot easier than the other, uh, especially right. when push comes to shove. Right. So awesome. Um, any other questions for me on anything there? Uh, I don't think so. So even if it's like a, um, it's a vexation, right? And they say, no, I don't want to sell, you know, right now and they don't give you a timeline, you just keep following up until they literally tell you to F off or it's been sold basically is what it sounds like. Yep. A hundred percent. We just continue following up. A lot of times what we'll do is, um, if, if they say, no, I'm not interested in selling right now, I'm like, okay, cool. I'll just follow up with you in the next three or four months. H have a wonderful day. And if they don't stop me, then they didn't stop me. <laughs> I'm still going to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just going to follow up with them. Um, they're going to go into REI SIF with the status follow up and then they're going to get, um, a date. Cool. Yeah, that's how I, I literally nixed Podio and just did everything from REI Sift. Um, and now that my VA's using it, maybe eventually she can do lead managing, right? Um, she's she's great. So I want to get her trained up on that, have her take the lead gen challenge and all this stuff so she can really become an extra REI Sift even more so than, than what I know. Sweet. Awesome, dude. I appreciate it. I'm glad we were able to have this conversation, know a little bit more about what you got going on, kind of, you know, the, the, the progress that you're at right now. And I think if we focus in on those, those items and we just kind of be consistent with it and refine it, um, then, then we're going to be in a really awesome spot in the next month or two. Um, don't forget to continue to make like really aggressive offers on the MLS and, and stuff yeah. like you're already doing, because it is a crazy thing. Even you mentioned Josh Nicodemus earlier, even in my market, he's, still like one of the only flippers making offers on the MLS around here and he's killing it with it. So that's it. I told him like, he, I don't think he does off market market anymore. Like there's no need, need for him to do it. Yeah. He literally buys everything, everything on the market. Right. A hundred percent, you know? So, um, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for coming on and, uh, thanks for being vulnerable. And I look forward to having you on in the next couple months and getting an update on kind of what you got going on. No, man, I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to put these into, into effect and, you know, see what it does. Awesome. Appreciate it, bro. Thanks, man. Later. See you.